link. Um, is that? I hope I'm audible enough. Thank yes, you. If you can hear me. We can hear you. Oh, all right. Thank you so much. Um, colleagues, welcome. And uh, thank you all for making the time and joining today's session, which is our laboratory virtual CME in line with our um, CPD program um, under the Medical and Dental Council. So today's session um, is our fifth and last session of the calendar quarter, first quarter of the year 2023 to 2024 by the EMDC calendar. So today's session will be looking at the part, part two of medical microbiology diagnostic techniques. We have our presenter, speaker, and Andy Swazamini from the microbiology department. So we'll take us through that module. And uh, just like the usual, we have a quiz at the end. And please do remember to complete it, which acts as our register as well for our documentation. And also try to also document the same training uh, the same in your CPD logbook. So without any further waste of time, can I hand over to Andy so to take over, share screen and get it on with the presentation. Thank you. Over to you, Andy. Thank you, Dr. I can't hear on this one. Okay, good afternoon, colleagues. My name is Andy Swatlamini, as I have been introduced. So today we'll be doing part two of our microbiology diagnostic techniques. So today we'll cover the methods that we use in identifying organisms in microbiology. We'll also look at some types of media that are used for culture. We'll discuss gram stain a bit as we did previously in the last presentation. We'll also um, talk about principles of some biochemical tests that are used in microbiology and we'll discuss the importance of quality control in microbiology. We'll discuss advanced testing methods that are used in microbiology, such as the Vitec MS and the Vitec 2 Compact and PCR. So we'll talk about the principles of these analyzers which are being used. So some of the methods that we are using currently in microbiology to identify organisms, the first, the first method is obviously the gram stain. As I mentioned in the previous presentation that gram stain is uh, used in the sample. When you receive a sample initially, you're supposed to do an initial gram stain so that you know what to expect when you're doing the culture. And then we also have medias, indicator media, such as your CLED and other medias as well. We also use some biochemical tests. We'll touch on a few of these. We'll not cover all of them. There are also some commercial options which we're going to discuss biochemical test strips, such as the API and the automated systems. <laughs> so we have different types of medias that we use. Some laboratories may choose to buy readily made media, but currently in our laboratory, we prepare our own media. I'm speaking for Mbabane Government Hospital Laboratory. So we prepare our own media, although um, buying ready-made media can save time in pouring and also will ensure that your media is up to standard, but it's also cost-effective to just prepare your own media where you buy the powders and then you prepare the media. So our medias are um, grouped into 
specific groups, we have basic media, which are standard nutritional content for non-fastidious organisms. So non-fastidious organisms are the ones that do not require any special nutrients. So this media is usually used as a base for other medias. For example, we have nutrients agar, and we have selective medias. So these medias contain substances such as bile salts or antibiotics and et cetera, which certain organism so it will then have to know that so that we know which types of medias to select and which microorganisms we are targeting we also have um, enriched media such as your blood agar so these ones contain the extra nutrients they allow for the growth of fastidious as well as non-fastidious microorganisms they have um they may be enriched with blood or vi vitamins. Then we have indicator media, which uh, contains extra, which contain which contain substances which change color. For example, when carbohydrate fermentation leads to acid production by certain organisms, then uh, recently or currently there's also what we call chromogenic agar which contains chromogenic substrates that change color in response to the presence of bacterial enzymes. So the color change is species specific. Therefore, organisms can be identified by their colony color. So they allow for rapid, rapid basic identification, but um, is relatively expensive and requires well-controlled storage conditions. So with the chrome agar, there's different types of chrome agar or the chromogenic agar. There's different types of chrome agar. You may find that um, there are ones for yeast, which will uh, differentiate the yeast into certain species level. So if you are expecting candida albicans from the package inset, when you're preparing that media, you will know that uh, candida albicans will show this blue color, for example. Um, if you are expecting any other different species, so there's different species and you are told the color change. So there's rapid um, identification straight from the media, which means once you culture, when there's growth, looking at the color of the colonies, you will know exactly what, what um, organism it is. Although you can be able to do some further tests to also confirm the organism identified. So here we have some of the examples of medias which we use in the lab. We have the nutrient acre, as I have mentioned, it's a basic uh, media. We can use it for general purpose because it supports the growth of a wide range of non-fastidious organisms. So for the basic media, this one does not allow for the growth of some fastidious organisms as they have special um requirements. Then we have blood agar, which will allow for the growth of both the fastidious and non-fastidious organisms. So for most swabs, we subculture, or, and also for subculture of blood cultures, we use this type of media. It's an enriched media. We also have the chocolate agar, which allows for growing most fastidious organisms. And then, as I've mentioned, we have the chrome agar. We also have clade agar. We call this one a selective indicator. We call this one a selective indicator because it will select um, for the growth of some microorganisms, but um, it will also change color to that specific um, microorganism. So we use this one mostly when we're culturing urine samples. One of the advantages of, the, of this media is that it 
stops Proteus from swarming. As we may know that Proteus, most of the time, one of its characteristics is that it swarms in the plate. So when you're using clade, you will not have the swarming. Then we have Makonki Eka, which is used for gram negatives. It's also a selective indicator. Then we have modified New York City Eka, which is a selective media for Neisseria gonorrhea. So it's selective and it's enriched for that organism. Then we have Muela Hintin Eka, which is the one we use mostly for antimicrobial susceptibility testing or sensitivity testing. So for this media, you may also add some supplements. Hello. Hello. If you you change the condition of payment, rather make it without the Can you hear me? I'm back. Then the second one was the one that was disconnected. Yeah. If you can go back to the last slide, the okay. previous slide. Okay. This one. Okay, I'm not sure. And then, <laughs> Okay, I'm not sure where I got cut off, but I was saying we also have the Muela Hintin Eka, which we use for our antimicrobial sensitivity testing. So for some species, you may require to add some supplements as they have special requirements. So I made an example of your streptococcus pneumonia, which may require that maybe you enrich the media with some sheep blood. We also have the Excel DAGA, which is a selective indicator media for Salmonella and Shigella species. Then Grim stain, as I mentioned, it's very important that you do your Grim stain before or after culturing your sample on the specimen itself, it's very important that you do your gram stain in case you have issues or in growing or isolating that organism, at least your gram stain can give a preliminary result. So we do have the procedure for gram stain highlighted. As you know, gram positives will retain the primary star violet and they'll have a purple color, then gram negative will have the pink color. So factors that can lead to incorrect results for the gram stain may include excessive heat fixation, which may damage the cell wall, over decolorization so that the stain is washed out. So for example, for your gram positives, as we know, they are supposed to retain the crystal violet, which is the primary stain. So if you over decolorize, they may end up taking the counter stain, which is your saffronin, and they'll end up looking pink, like gram negatives. So instead of getting gram positives, you'll get gram negative, false gram negatives. 
also old or badly stored iodine using an old culture to do the smear so the organisms may be damaged and you'll not have viable bacteria so we always say your colonies when you're doing your gram stain have to be 18 to 24 hours old at least so some measures that can be taken to prevent errors include, you have to make sure that you follow the laboratory SOPs. If it says two seconds or five or two minutes, make sure you follow that. Make sure the reagents are dated and they are renewed regularly because if the reagents are stored long enough, bacteria may grow in them and appear on the slides. You then and have you may then end up having microbiology include we have catalase we have coagulase oxidase indole ureas triple sugar ion vp citrate dnas um we are going to discuss the basic ones if not all the biochemical tests that we use but we'll just discuss a few and we'll look at the principle of some of these basic ones, which are the ones which are mostly used when you're identifying microorganisms. Some of them are used for gram negative, some are used for gram positive. So the first one we have catalase. So catalase, you, you may choose to use a method or a tube method. So you use hydrogen peroxide the principle is based on the enzyme breaking down the hydrogen peroxide into oxygen and water. Therefore, if there's a positive reaction, you will see with the formulation of the bubbles, as you can see on your, is it on the left? Yes, on the, le on the left on the slide, the positive reaction, yeah, you can see the bubbles on the slide as well as on your right, there are some bubbles on in that tube. So some precautions that you need to take are that when you're picking, because this method you use it um, directly from the colonies, you have to pick colonies directly from your plate. After culturing, when you pick your colonies, you either use an applicator stick or you can use a plastic. You have to avoid using a metal or an, a wire loop because you may get false positive results. So this test is mostly used to differentiate gram positive bacteria. So it will differentiate between your staphylococcus and your streptococcus, uh, as well as your endo staphylococcus are going to be positive for the catalase and you'll be negative. So obviously after doing, doing this, this test, if you do not have any other ways of testing and you're using biochemical tests, then you may need to do further tests. And then we have coagulase. So after doing your catalase and it is positive, you will suspect that, okay, you already know it's a um, staphylococcus species. So when you do your coagulase now, it will now distinguish between your staphylococcus species because so coagulase is positive for staph aureus. So you can use it to confirm your staph aureus. From here, it's possible to report uh, the other species as coagulase negative stuff if you don't have any other means to further do to do further tests to confirm the species of the organism. So the principle of this test is that if there is coagulase in the
fibrin fibrinogen in the plasma into insoluble fibrin, so forming those clumps that you are seeing on the right. So a positive reaction you'll see by the clumps. And then we have oxidase. So this one, you use it mostly for your gram negatives. So we say all enterobacterialis are negative for this test. So we use it mostly for gram negatives. So it will identify bacteria which produce the cytochrome C oxidase. So if it's positive, you see by that purple reaction, we use a filter paper. So some microorganisms that are positive will be your aeromonas, your pseudomonas, your Neisseria, Campylobacter. Um, we lost your audio. Let his colleagues can he uh play with her? She's trying to connect again. Thank Okay. Apologies, colleagues. It seems the network is playing games with me, but I hope you can all hear me. We can hear you. Thank you. So the next biochemical test is the indole test. So this one will detect the ability of the organism to degrade the amino acid tryptophan and produce indole. So for positive organisms, you will see with that pink um, ring layer on top, 
and for negative you will see that there is no color change so again it's very important that you set up a positive and a negative control We use this test to confirm E. coli. You can also use it to confirm um, or to differentiate between your Klebsiella pneumoniae and your Klebsiella oxytoca, where Klebsiella pneumoniae is negative for indole and Klebsiella oxytoca is positive. And also you can use it to confirm your Proteus mirabilis because it is negative for indole, whereas the other species are positive. The next biochemical test is the ureus test. So it's used to detect Hello. Apologies, colleague. Um, apologies, colleagues, I'm back. It seems my network is unstable again, but I hope everyone can clearly hear me. You can hear you, all right. So we also have API test strips. So these are miniaturized uh, miniaturized biochemical tests, basically. They consist of multiple biochemical tests, which are in a single kit form. They come in a strip with micro wells and reagents. Right. So the one that I'm showing on the screen is the API 20E, which is used to identify organisms which are which fall under the Enterobacterialis um, group. So the testing process is straightforward. You first culture, as you know, everything you need to culture first. So after culture, when you have a positive culture or you have growth, and then you pick your colonies, prepare your 0 0.5 McFarland standard, then once you've prepared your 0.5 McFarland standard, 
into these colorful wells, although as you can see up here, we have the positive reaction after incubation and below we have the negative reaction. So there's no, there are no colors before you actually inoculate your organism. So you take your 0 0.5 McFarland standard, you inoculate into those wells, then you incubate for 24 hours. After incubation, then you read the color changes, you compare, as you can see um, on the screen for positive results in each well, these are the color changes you will see. And for negative um, results, below are the color changes that are, that you will see. Once you have your color changes, you will write whether it's positive or negative. I have an example in the next slide of how it looks like. So for example, here we have a Salmonella species. So as you can see, they've inoculated the Once you've seen your biochemical reaction and you have that number. Okay, we understand. Then you will use, we have an, a software or a database for all these microorganisms that are up to species level. So then you can enter that number or you can compare with the package insets, looking at the um, number that you got, then it will tell you the organism identification and also the percentage of the... And then we have... Uh, some advantages, as you may know, for each test, we have advantages and disadvantages. So for our biochemical test, the advantage is that obviously they, uh, they have low cost. They only need to stock, you only need to stock essential tests, not all of them. It gives enough information to identify most isolates to guide treatment. And uh, most people or laboratory technologists may find this interesting as it requires the skill of the technologist to perform these tests. So the disadvantage is that um, they are hard, it's hard to get an accurate identification unless you have all of the required reagents. They are time consuming and quality control of all reagents is required to ensure that you are producing um, cor correct and accurate results. So different reagents may need different storage conditions and also they require a, a high level of expertise. Advantages and disadvantages of the test strips now, the API is that the advantage is easier and it's less time, con time consuming to perform as I explained earlier, and it gives a numerical answer which can be used to give a relatively accurate identification. It's a, there are some available ones which the results can come out within four hours, but most of them require the 24 hour incubation. They are higher in cost is a disadvantage, they require refrigeration. So some places may not have the refrigerators, although I think in our case, we are fine. And also there's the need for the online access to the standard database. And it leads to a loss of laboratory interpretative skills and expertise. As you saw, you just look at uh, color changes, then you determine whether it's positive or negative for that organism. You come up with the number, you have your result. The importance of 
quality control in microbiology as it is very important to do your quality control. Um, so the core purpose of quality control is to ensure that all elements involved in the whole process are accurate and they are valid. So you test your reagents, such as your media. It also tests the environment, the instruments, and the techniques which are used if they are working properly. So when you do your QC, you'll ensure that you can grow the organism that you are looking for. For example, if you have a Maconky acre and you are trying to grow E. coli, you're expecting your colonies to be pink and lactose fermenting. If you do your QCs, you are able to confirm that your media is performing correctly and it's giving you accurate results. And also selective media inhibiting the appropriate organisms and allowing the growth of others. So it means for example, if your media is supposed to select the, for the growth of some micro Okay, so if you're expecting your organism to be negative for a certain biochemical test, if you do your QCs, you will ensure that you're identifying your organisms correctly. If your media, and or it also ensures that your media and test reagents are working correctly, for your example, if they have deteriorated during storage, or if there's something wrong with that manufact with the with what the manufacturer had supplied, the QC test will pick this up. Um, it will also ensure that you are performing the test under optimal conditions. For example, your incubator is at the right temperature. And also it will ensure that organisms are correctly identified before, which is um, that the identified, I think there was a typo here, the identified to species specific level before you can actually do your AST and also ensures that the results from the laboratory can be relied on as accurate for both clinical and surveillance use. And also your patients will then get the correct treatment due to timely and accurate diagnosis. So here we have a picture of, it's called a Vitec MS. It's one of the testing, new testing platforms which are used in the microbiology lab here in Bavane. It's referred to as a Maldetov. So basically the Maldetov is the principle of the analyzer, but the manufacturer is Biomeru for this one, and it's called the Vitec MS, but it uses the Maldutov principle. So the Maldutov stands for Matrix Assisted Laser Desorption Ionization Time of Flight Mass Spectrometry. So it gives a result faster than the biochemical test. Within minutes, um, you have your organism identification. So obviously you still need to do your culture. Once you have a positive culture or you have growth, then you are able to pick your colonies and do your identification and you get your results within 
five minutes or depending on the number of samples that you have because um, you can load on a slide maybe about 48 samples per slide. So it is both accurate and reliable and it gives identification to species level from a pure culture. So you have to make sure that your, your colonies are pure. They're mixed so that you are able to get an accurate result and your result your needs should not be old at least they should be 18 to 24 hours old in order in order for you to get metrometry it is an analytical technique for determining the elemental composition of a sample the MS principle consists of ionizing chemical compounds to generate charged molecules and to measure their mass to charge ratio. So the Maldutov technology used by MS examines the patterns of proteins detected directly from intact bacteria from Oh, apologies, apologies, colleagues. I hope you can hear me loud and clear. Okay. So there's an electrical field in that instrument, which then guides the ions into the time of flight mass spectrometer, which separates them according to their mass to charge ratio. And ultimately the quantity of each ion is measured. So the detection is achieved at the end of the tube. So at the top, there's the laser and that's where the detection happens. The instrument has as well with all the with some well a lot of microorganisms so it can be able to identify bacteria yeast and some microbacteria so depending on the reagents of the lab so here in our laboratory we are able to identify bacteria and yeast we do not have reagents for the fungi and the mycobacterium, but identify those. So the next instrument is the Vitec 2 Compact. This picture was also taken in our microbiology lab. It's also an automated system. So it Basically for this one, um, it's just an automated version of the biochemical test strips with more reagents and analytical software. It can also do AST. So for this one, you have to know the gram reaction of that organism. You have to know if it is, if it is a gram negative or a gram positive before you can actually load it on this analyzer. So you have to do your gram stain, confirm if it is a gram negative or a gram positive. Then from there, you do your McFarland standard, depending on your organism for gram positives uh, and gram negatives, you have to prepare a 0 0.5 to 0 0.63, 0 0.64 McFarland standard. For yeast, uh, it has to be a 2.0 McFarland standard. 
So it can also do identification and AST for both bacteria and yeast. Although it does have some limitations as most tests, for some microorganisms, it cannot um, detect them to species level. For example, um, your Enterobacter species, it can give you an Enterobacter species and not actually say the species up to species level. And I forgot to mention that also for the Malditov or your Vitek MS, it does have some limitation in the sense that um, it does confuse your so this organisms so it is between e coli and shigella so if it's a shigella species it may give you e coli or shigella if it is an e coli it will say e coli or shigella Because if I take two pens on the some organism identification was so as I was saying for the Vitec MS you are able to get your results within minutes, but for the Vitec 2 Compact, you may find that your results may come out maybe ranging from between four hours to 20 hour microorganisms, which take longer, may require more time. Organisms such as E. coli, which are fast growers, may be identified within four hours to 10 hours, but some gram positives mostly will take longer, like 18 to 24 hours for them to be identified. Again, when you are using this testing platform, you're supposed to have fresh colonies so that you get accurate and reliable results. Your colonies also need to be pure. You're not supposed to use mixed growth. So if you have a mixed growth, you have to make sure that you subculture uh, and then you isolate pure colonies, then you can identify. Okay, I decided to put in the blood culture system as well, since we're just talking about our new test or our testing platforms. So this one, we can say it's a blood culture analyzer. It's semi-automated because it can only tell you that the blood culture is positive or negative. As you can see, this red light is on. It means there was a positive blood culture. If there's a positive blood culture, it can detect within hours, depending on the organism, if it is a fast grow or a slow grow, and also on the quantity of the bacteria or that organism. Uh, for positive vials, it will you will hear an alarm, which will notify you that there's a positive vial and you need to remove it and subculture onto your testing depending on your available on the availability whether you do a biochemical test or you use the api strips which we have spoken about or you use the automated instruments which we spoke about so for negatives it will show a green light and it takes up to five days incubation for a negative result 
So here I've just put in a flow chart for gram positive organisms identify gram positive organisms. This and you are using biochemical tests. This is the flow chart. For example, you do your gram stain and you I and you see you have a gram positive cocci, then you perform your catalyst. If it's positive, you are going to do your coagulase or DNAs and you'll confirm your organism. If it's negative, you also do further testing depending on what you find. So here I also have a flow chart of some gram negatives to give you a guide uh, seeing a gram negative on that slide. So I have put this organism since, you know, it's a special organism, Yonesia gonorrhea. It is a fastidious and delicate organism and requires careful handling. As I'm and it's not cultured, you may end up with false negative results. So it doesn't survive uh, drying or temperatures much below body temperature. It is cultured on special media. So another test that you can use to to confirm this organism, as I mentioned, when you're looking at, looking at your at the colony morphology of that plate. We also have the acinetobacter species, which are non-fermenting or be differentiated from other non-ferments. Test pseudomonas species because they are oxidase negative. So biochemical tests like API okay. will be needed to if necessary. But phenotypic tests to identify at the species level are usually not very reliable. We have come to the end of the presentation. So these are some of the references which have been used for this presentation. Thank you for your patience and for your time. Um, my apologies for the glitches in the network if there are any questions, I am happy to take them. Thank you. Thank you so much, Andiswa, for this very um, well-structured and impactful presentation on our CME session. Colleagues would like to open uh, the time for teams, discussions, comments on the above mentioned uh, presentation or topic in relation to um, medical microbiology, diagnostic techniques. If there are any questions, this is the colleagues. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Fulton. Over to you. Oh, also a hand from Fulton. Um, any other questions, colleagues? Anyone with a question or a comment?
Okay. Um, I want to believe that everything was clear. Um, it's, um, as as I mentioned earlier, uh, we we usually have this presentation which is marked with a small quiz at the end to just get uh, your understanding and also information of on 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 any, any topic that we are deliberating on that time. So right now, I will post a quiz on the chat box. And I kindly request everyone to attempt to complete it. It's not that hard. It's just an attendance register that you are using to document your participation in today's session. And also, it is also um, marked up. It goes straight to the EMTC database. You participated in today's sessions. And I must say that today's session was two CPD points, which everyone on completion of the quiz will get to the point. Please do remember to complete that uh, session in you know, your um, notebook so that it retrieves the value with what you have in the database. I will also share my screen here with the QR code of the piece. Just try to scan it and, uh, and also just go through it. And yeah, thank you, colleague. So this is the code of the quiz. So I have the I have the quiz link on the chat box as well. Please follow it through and uh, complete. Thank you. Is there anyone having issues accessing the quiz from the chat, chat box link? Uh, please, if, if anyone has any issues, please indicate so that we can uh, we can try to send resend the quiz. Um, as we wind down, colleagues, I'd like to take this time to appreciate uh, your briefing in the session. And I must say that this session was basically the fifth session um, for this quarter, which is our first quarter, according to the EMPC calendar, which runs from October to September next year. So I will be sharing again next year, in January, after we did the AMLAX the trainings for next quarter. I'll be sharing again um, uh, the calendar, which will be synchronized with the MOH calendar training that we are having so that you can know how many points that each training has as you participate where you're invited, and also how many and when CME is available. And also, we are also open to invite um, CPD providers with different um, thematic areas and talking points so that we can incorporate in our calendar and make it a very uh, strategic and impactful um, CME session for the lab. Um, from me, thank you so much, and please do complete the quiz. Um, thank you. I thank you all. Thank you, Wangan.